Which was the most impressive city of late antiquity? By now we have discussed in detail the urban layout and buildings of the three great cities of the late Roman Empire around the year 400 AD. These were Rome, the eternal city where it all started, then the new Rome, Constantinople and Alexandria, the intellectual capital. And in this comparison I also want to include the other great city of the empire, namely Antioch. Each one of those mentioned cities was incredibly splendorous beyond belief in their prime, but which one would have appeared most magnificent to a traveler of the year 400 AD? Which was the largest in those times and which one boasted the most monumental buildings? Well, we shall see during the course of this video that answering this question is not as easy as we might think. For me, the early 400s is the last time in Roman history where there was still some semblance of glory and splendor throughout the empire. In the west, Stilicho had just defeated Radagaisus and his giant army consisting of many Germanic tribes, not once but twice in 405 and a final time in 406. He had also defeated Alaric and his Visigoths in 402. A statue of Stilicho had been erected in the Forum of Trajan in Rome to commemorate these victories and the poet Claudius Claudian wrote a panegyric in Stilicho's honor. In the east, the Goths had just been cast out of Constantinople and the dangerous insurrection of Tribigild and Gainas, where the east came dangerously close to falling, was overcome. There was for the last time a moment of triumph in both the western and eastern Roman empires and during those days there were very impressive cities which reflected this state where Rome shone brightly for the last time. The largest cities of the empire in those days were Rome, Constantinople, Alexandria and Antioch. Rome was of course, even in the year 400 AD, still by far the largest. The old venerable city where everything had started in 753 BC, 1153 years earlier, had now grown to full size. All building projects had been completed. The last secular building project of ancient Rome was the increase of the height of the Aurelian walls to 16 meters, this formidable defensive wall that encompassed the largest part of the urban area of the Eternal City. The city gates were also increased in size and strengthened and the tomb of Hadrian was incorporated into the city walls as a fortress. This was done in the years 401 and 402. In 403, Rome would see one of the last imperial triumphs to celebrate Stilicho's victory over Alaric. In short, the years until 406 AD were the last good years in the city of Rome for a long time. A traveler in that year would have found a magnificent city. The population in 400 AD was still 800,000 inhabitants and thus Rome was still the largest city of the entire Roman Empire in both west and east. The steep population decline only started with the three sacks of Rome in the 5th century. I talked about the state of Rome after the three sacks in this video here. Even though the Greco-Roman temples had been ordered closed by the now Christian emperors of the empire, they were still standing as yet untouched by the passing of time. Yes, the interior statues of the old gods had been either removed or the entrance door simply remained shut so that the interior would gather dust, but the exterior of the old temples was yet still very much intact. Only temples that had fallen into ruin and were beyond repair were spoiled for building material in order to erect Christian churches. But in 400 AD there were still only few churches in Rome. The city was overwhelmingly dominated by pagan era architecture. Even by that time you would have seen classical Greco-Roman temples and buildings wherever you looked. And of course above all the temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus on the Capitoline Hill was towering the roof tiles of gilded bronze glittering in the sun still as magnificent as ever. And if you are a Rome fan like me and you are searching for a Christmas present, the Rota board game by the SPQR shop might interest you. This ancient Roman game was found carved into countless stones all across the former Roman Empire and now you can play as the Romans did thanks to SPQR shop. 
but SPQR Shop also builds replicas of many other Roman items such as rings, pendants, coins, attributes and terracottas. With my link in the description and pinned comment and by typing in Majorianus, you can get a 10% discount on every purchase. So don't hesitate because this is high quality handcrafted stuff which SPQR Shop is building itself. The perfect present for yourself or for somebody else you know that might be interested in Roman history. So back to Rome. How many buildings did the Eternal City possess in 400 AD? According to two ancient documents, the Notitia Urbis Romae and the Curiosum Urbis Romae, Rome possessed in those times 8 bridges over the Tiber, 19 aqueducts, 4000 statues, 1797 private palaces, a few imperial palaces, actually one giant imperial palace complex on the Palatine Hill and 46,600 apartment buildings called Insulae. The city boasted truly magnificent buildings such as the Amphitheatrum Flavium, better known as the Colosseum because it stood nearby a giant colossus, countless temples, the largest one having been the Temple of Venus and Roma, 856 small baths, 11 gigantic public baths, 28 public libraries, dozens of private ones, many circuses, the largest one having been the Circus Maximus, many amphitheaters and 24 churches of varying size, but only one, the St. Peter's Basilica was very large. And all this on a surface area of 14 square kilometers, for that was the area encompassed within the Aurelian walls, although it must be noted that the urban area was very likely larger, since the city had grown beyond the Aurelian wall in parts, so to anywhere from 14 to 20 square kilometers of urban area. Thus, by sheer size, population and number of buildings, Rome would have won. But wait, it's not that easy, because there now was a new Rome, Nova Roma, later known as Constantinople, which was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire in 400 AD. This magnificent city must in those days already have reached a population of 400,000 people, with a peak estimated to have been around 5 to 600,000, but that peak was not reached until the reign of Justinian. The layout of the city was very different from the one of Rome and it was strategically much better protected, surrounded to three quarters by water and to the west by the Theodosian land walls. Although it must be noted that in the year 400 AD these walls were not yet finished, construction actually began only in 404 AD. The city was like Rome, built on seven hills and also divided into 14 regions and the Theodosian land walls later would encompass 14 square kilometers of urban area, so very similar to that of Rome. However, most of the area between the Constantinian and Theodosian land walls was grassland, so the real urban area of Constantinople was smaller than that of Rome, possibly around 10 square kilometers. We have a good document which tells us how magnificent Constantinople also must have appeared in those times, namely the Notitia Urbis Constantinopolitanae. The city boasted 5 imperial palaces, 14 large churches, 8 public baths, 153 private baths, 4 large imperial fora, 2 senate houses, 2 theaters, 4 harbors, 4 cisterns, 4 nymphaea, 4,388 domus or palace buildings, one colossus, one circus, namely the Hippodrome and a few temples in the old Capitolium of the former city of Byzantium. We don't know how many insulae or apartment buildings Constantinople had, but probably less than Rome. Now taken only by numbers, Constantinople would lose to Rome. However, the incredibly intelligent layout and fortifications of Constantinople made it an impregnable fortress. Also, the city had four harbors, so during a land siege, Constantinople could be sustained by sea. And so due to these facts, the city could withstand many sieges, which made it strategically superior to the old Rome. Also, there were more large churches, so the new capital certainly won regarding the size of Christian architecture. In the year 400, the city would have certainly appeared much less pagan than the old Rome, but much more Christian. The Church of the Holy Apostles would have been very magnificent both in size and in decoration, since the Hagia Sophia was not yet built. 
In 400 AD, even though closed, the old pagan temples on the old Agora of Byzantium were quite likely still standing. So these were the last years where Constantinople still offered an interesting mix of old classical Greco-Roman and new Christian architecture. Something which Rome of those times did not yet offer, as it was much more classical Greco-Roman. But there was of course also Alexandria. Around the year 400 AD, Alexandria still probably had a population of 500,000. But it might also have been already lower by that time, since it is said that the plague of Cyprian in the 3rd century had halved the population of that magnificent city, and it is not known if the city ever reached its old peak population of 500,000 again before the Muslim conquest. Alexandria clearly wins though with regard to longest lasting large city of antiquity. Long before Constantinople grew large and long even before Rome reached hundreds of thousands of inhabitants, Alexandria already had reached 500,000. All magnificent and imposing structures that we know of had been completed already by the mid 3rd century BC. Alexandria was the intellectual center of the Roman Empire and this was still the case to some extent even in 400 AD. In its prime, this city had both the highest lighthouse of the Roman Empire, which was at the same time the highest high-rise structure of the world in those times, if you don't count the pyramids of Gizeh, and the largest library of the ancient world, the famous library of Alexandria. The Pharos, the lighthouse of Alexandria, was over 100 meters in height. Estimates range to as high as 118 meters, and in 400 AD, this building was already around 650 years old and still standing in excellent condition. It stood until the late Middle Ages, when it was destroyed in large parts by several earthquakes. As for the Great Library, it is unknown if it was still standing in 400 AD. It is likely that it was destroyed in the Great Civil Wars of the Crisis of the 3rd century. But if it was still standing, it must have already been very diminished and its glory days were long past. To make matters worse, the Serapium of Alexandria, that magnificent temple that towered over the city, was vandalized and demolished on orders of the religious Christian zealot Theophilus of Alexandria in 391 AD. So by 400 AD, most of the old grandiose monuments of Alexandria's prime, the Serapion and the library, were already very likely in ruins. Only the Pharos was still towering over the city. Yet despite all this, the city must still have appeared very magnificent, with many amphitheaters, a hippodrome, many insula-style apartment buildings, a large street running through the entire city from west to east, impressive city walls, many baths, many imperial fora, and many Greco-Roman temples still standing. It might not have been quite as splendorous anymore as in its prime, but it was still a sight to behold and very large, even as late as 400 AD, covering a surface area of around 10 square kilometers. And then there was of course Antioch. Out of these four cities, Antioch was the smallest, yet we should not be deceived by size alone, because the city was still extremely impressive. By 400 AD, Antioch was at 700 years of age, the youngest of all the aforementioned cities. The population of Antioch is estimated to have reached a peak of 250,000 inhabitants, although some exaggerated estimates even give a number of 500,000. However, 250,000 seems more realistic, which it probably still had around 400 AD. This city had a very different layout from the other cities, in that it was built directly adjacent to mountains, and was divided by the river Orontes into two parts. An island which contained a large circus, a stadium or amphitheater, an imperial palace and large public baths, whereas the main part of the city was located on the side adjacent to the mountainous area. As in Alexandria, a large main street passed through the city and there were many old Greco-Roman temples and fora still standing unspoiled in 400 AD. Interestingly, Antioch did not witness violent clashes between the Christian and Greco-Roman worshippers as in Alexandria. In fact, the Antiochians are one of the positive examples of peaceful coexistence of the new and the old faith in the Roman Empire. 
Thus, in the year 400, we would have found many old Greco-Roman temples still absolutely intact. But of course, as in the many other cities of the empire, the temples here had also been ordered closed by Theodosius. By 400 AD, many new churches had sprung up, and so this city would certainly have also offered a quite interesting mix of old and new, of classical Greco-Roman architecture and new Christian basilicas. In the center of the city, there was an oval forum, the Forum of Valens, and the whole city was surrounded by impressive city walls that reached even higher up into the hillside. The island part of the city also had its own city walls and was connected to the main city by five bridges. The total encompassed city area was about three square kilometers, so about a fifth the area of Rome within the Aurelian walls confirming our suspicion that 500,000 inhabitants might have been an exaggerated number and 250,000 might be more accurate. To the eyes of a traveler in the year 400 AD, the city would have offered a still incredible sight, rivaling Alexandria, Constantinople and even Rome. So then what was the most impressive city of the year 400 AD? To me personally, it would have been Rome, but that of course is highly subjective. Rome had the largest amassment of incredible buildings and a gargantuan size for a late antique city, but of course I can completely understand if someone would prefer Constantinople, Alexandria or Antioch. Constantinople certainly wins with regard to its incredible strategic location, which made it virtually impregnable. Alexandria with its insane skyscraper of antiquity, the Pharos, and Antioch with its fascinating landscape between mountains and a river. Which one out of those four cities would be your favorite large city of the late Roman Empire? Let me know in the comments section. In future videos, we will also take a look at other interesting cities of the late Roman Empire such as Athens, Mediolanum, Arelate and many more. And please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting my work on Patreon or via YouTube membership because the long term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. This channel would not work without our amazing Patreon and YouTube members and I want to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any way. Gratias Tibiago Amiki. And if you are interested in a more detailed comparison of Rome versus Constantinople, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in learning more about Alexandria during the zenith of the Roman Empire, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and bene valete.